I'd like to start by correcting a piece of popular poetry. Roses are red, violets are violet. My plan was to come here and talk about, uh, about politics and kind of raise about the, the Tea Party, but um, I'm not even going to something else. Something else came up recently in my, in my life that, that kind of put all the, the political issues uh, onto the back burner. Something more aggressive. I was at the coast uh, and we stayed in a, a small uh, hotel right on the coast, and uh, it was kind of but on the on the little table in the room, uh, there was this little table tent, and uh, it caught my eye. I don't know if you can see it here, but uh, it says, uh, it's titled, How to Escape a Tsunami. <laughs> um, and it says, if you feel an earthquake, a tsunami may fall. And then there's a little cartoon here, a uh, little graphic of, a, of someone trying to clamber up the side of a cliff that's a lot shorter than the wave. <laughs> um, and that caught my attention too, so I thought I'll better have a look at this uh, little instruction. And it, it has everything you need to, to do uh, to escape the tsunami. And there's just three basic rules that they, they suggest you follow. One is, uh, number one, drop, cover, and hold during the earthquake. Number two, Move inland and uphill quickly, or use local evacuation routes during the tsunami. And as you can imagine, the, the timing between those two things you do is going to be really important. Because <laughs> you know, you've, you've got to rapidly shift from the drop, cover, and hold phase into the run up the cliff. <laughs> and then the third one, I, I don't think the same people put the third one in here. It says, uh, wait for official all clear before returning to beach. Now, just, you know, how many of you think you probably return to the beach? <laughs> There's this sort of a side event. Um, <laughs> and, so anyway, that's that's what happened, and then we were driving home, and as we approached Portland, um, we were talking in the car about what, you know, what a nice, beautiful, livable city Portland is, and we were looking at the, the skyline, and then behind it, you know, in the east, uh, as the sun was going down, there was no sunset, you could see these nice pink shadows falling on the, on the big, long line of volcanoes! <laughs> Most Portlanders aren't as alarmed as I think they should be uh, about the fact that, that we live in literally a trough between tsunami hazard zone and what the Volcano Encyclopedia, which is a book I recommend that you get a copy of. <laughs> it's very big and heavy. You wouldn't you wouldn't want to be lugging up that hill. Um, but in there it says that the Cascade Range is the most dangerous volcanic zone in the northern hemisphere. And that's where we are in our nice livable city. Um, Portland brags in tourist information that, that it's the only city in the world with a volcano in the city limits. Um, it's not, that's something to cover up. Page on that site where you can go look and you can just go down 
through the list of all the known volcanoes in the world and, and see what they're doing at, at any given moment. Um, and that's a valuable resource. And uh, for example, just last, uh, about three or four months ago, do you know which famous volcano in the world was really active for months? Krakatoa. Krakatoa. Ring a bell? That was a very livable island until one day in 1983. And just remember that it's the tsunamis and the pyroclastic flows that are um, anyway, on this website, uh, they also have, like a lot of things, it's connected up somehow, I'm not sure how, to Facebook. So people can comment on the website. The website's not on Facebook, it's, it's the website. But, but they have this comment section, and those are, I guess, Facebook based. And, and there's one, um, I'm going to make sure I quote her right, uh, that, that really hurt me up and got me interested. Uh, and this is a comment. Uh, on the active volcanoes list from uh, Melody Williams, who uh, went to Forest Park High School in Forest Park, Georgia. And she says, uh, I wish they would all blow all the active and inactive volcanoes too, all at one time, and melt some of the hot fuck boards immediately. <laughs> <laughs> they need it so long now, I just love to see it happen to them. <laughs> uh, 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 I, I should learn more about Melanie Williams uh, to see whether I think she's the, an authority who can be trusted. And, and so I clicked on her name, and it's a link to her Facebook page. And there uh, I learned that her views are God is God is God is God is God. <laughs> if it's true once, it's true five times. <laughs> <laughs> her political views, too many crooks in charge of every person's lives in every country in this world, dot, dot, dot. And then uh, her uh, you know, additional comments, Hank Williams was murdered. <laughs> and nobody that has been playing in mine and his money all these years wants that proven because it will prove I am his child and will put my money back in my hand and get their hands off of it and out of it. Ten exclamation. <laughs> so I said I wasn't going to talk about the tea party, but I guess I am because you can figure that she's probably a high-ranking official. <laughs> so anyway, in sum, I think, uh, you know, be prepared, get a kit, make a plan. Um, <laughs> but the disaster kits that they advertise, uh, you know, they don't include things you would need around here, but all goes to hell. Jetpack. <laughs> a, a flashlight in a, in a can of the beans is not going to do it when there's a 300 mile an hour giant cloud of molten metal and ash uh, heading toward you. Um, you. You wouldn't have time to open that can. <laughs> Even if it had one of those you know, easy to open lids. Um,
trilogy to the girl with the dragon tattoo. Has anyone read the book?